Let's apply what we've learned in a demonstration that automates the technique of sandbagging. If you're not familiar with sandbagging, it's a practice of using div elements to force text in a document to wrap around an irregular boundary like the curve in a transparent image. In this particular demonstration, we're going to use the slice and dice technique that's described on the alistapart.com website. Let's take a look at the sandbagging technique so you can understand the process we're about to automate. When you drop an image on a web page, the text will wrap around the rectangular border of the image. This is non-ideal in this case. It results in a lot of wasted white space around the blue circle. Sandbagging allows the text to wrap around some arbitrary curve. In this case, the curve of the blue circle in the image. This is accomplished by replacing the large image in the web page with many tiny slices of the image displayed in unique div elements. Each div has a specified width and height and displays one small segment of the image. The net effect is that the text on the web page wraps around these div elements, making it look like it's actually wrapping around the curve in the image. The process of breaking up this image into tiny vertical slices of varying widths is not hard, but it is tedious, and it's not the kind of thing I'd like to do manually. So, we're going to automate it. An image is made up of rows and columns of pixel data. And let's say we're working with a standard slice height of 6 pixels. So the width of this div needs to cover the non-transparent part of the image. Let's start on the right-hand side of the image and scan backwards through each row until we find the leftmost transparent pixel. Once we have a list of those transparent pixels, the rightmost column of those pixels determines the width of the div element we need to cover that part of the image. We repeat this process for each slice, moving vertically through the image until we've processed all the image data. Once we have our div elements defined, we can put them back on the web page, and with a proper style sheet formatting, the browser will wrap the text around these div elements for us. I've captured this image processing logic in a script called convert to sandbags.ps1. Let's see how we're going to use this script before we dive into its actual contents. We invoke the script and pass it the name of an image file, in this case, circle.png. And upon doing so, the script will actually output the sequence of divs we need that slices up the image and displays it appropriately in the web page. I want to capture the script output, so I'll pipe the results to the clip program, which will put the information on the clipboard. Once that's done, I can go over to my HTML page and replace the image tag with the div elements created by the script. Save it, and when I refresh the web page, you can see that the new wrapping behavior is in place. The first line of our convert to sandbag script uses the param keyword to define the list of parameters that the script will accept. For instance, we've seen how we use the image file parameter to specify the name of the image we want to process. There's also a slice height parameter with a default value of 10 that we can use to adjust the size of each slice of the image. The first thing the script does is load the system.drawing assembly using the add type commandlet. This assembly contains the various image types that we need to pull the data out of our image file. These two lines use the system.drawing.imageTypes from file static method to load the image from disk. Because the from file static method requires a full path to the image, we use the PowerShell resolve path commandlet to change the name 
of the image file into a fully qualified path. Now that we have the image data, we can determine the number of slices we're going to create by taking the height of the image and dividing it by the height of each slice. Next, the script iterates through each slice that's going to create in the image, defining an X and Y value representing the width of the slice and its vertical offset in the image. These X and Y values, along with the slice height and the name of the image file, are placed inside of a string that defines the div element for the slice. Next, for each row of pixels in this slice of the image, the script defines a Y1 offset that represents this row of pixels. The offset is capped to the size of the image using the static min method of the math type. Starting with the rightmost pixel in this row, the script works backwards through each pixel in the row, finding the first pixel whose alpha value is not zero, meaning that it's not completely transparent. Once this pixel is found, the width of our div element will be updated to ensure that it covers the entire non-transparent part of the slice of the image. Once we've processed every slice of the image, we dispose of the image object to free up memory resources. By capturing the sandbagging logic in a script, not only have we saved ourselves time this time around, but we've also created a way to repeat the process if, say, the logo changes on the website. We can simply run the script again, specify the new image file, and pipe the output to the clipboard. and update the source of the web page to include the new sandbags that our script created. Save it, refresh the page, and the automation has done the work for us.